Well, folks, it is me, Rudy, with Alpha Investments. And today, guess what we got? We, hold on. Guess what we got? This is, oh, this is, hold on. Did I not cut that? I guess I didn't cut that. Please hold. I hope everyone's had a beautiful day. Today, we have a conversation on the world famous boom and bust of Infinity. We're going to do a case of collectors today for the patron. Philip O, all the way in Washington, not Washington State, not D.C., Terrace, all the way in Utah, the city. And, um, okay, we haven't really cracked and discussed Infinity on this channel very much in a long time since this product released. This was during the boom, and then it came out right at the tip when we started heading into the two-year bear market crash. These do have box toppers. And this product essentially relies on, well, basic lands, well, shock lands, which was one of the reasons we're doing this today. And there's a nice foil shock land. And um, galaxy foils. This entire product comes down to that. That's it. So a lot of playful, fun, some tournament legal, some not. Um, a lot of pe the feedback on this was nowhere near, there's our first minute. There's our first Galaxy Foil of the video. The f there's our second one. So there's a far out Galaxy. So the Galaxy Foil rares and mythics are essentially where the value is. And um, this was not the most well-received actual product compared to previous unsets. So we have here in the back, this is pretty much 90% of the whole product. You have our Foil Full Art and you have the Foil Galaxy Specialty Land, okay? Now, where are we at? So, these foil galaxy basic lands, I know, listen to this, ready? These are about four to eight dollars a piece. Okay? Now, everybody thought going into Ravnica Elemental, heh, there's a nice uh, Pero Lost Dice. Again, we got another galaxy foil. Again, some of these galaxy foils are still five, ten dollars. There's even a few, uh, I forgot the name, we'll recognize we see it. Carnival, <laughs> Carnival Barker. Is that a real dog or was that Rudy? I knew Rudy was a dog. Bingo. Love the art on that. And um, here we go in the back of the pack. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We've got our cheap regular, and there it is. Stomping ground, shock land in the galaxy space shocks. To me, these still remain Rudy's favorite shocks of all time. These galaxy shocks, I believe, and again, make fun of you if I'm pumping and, you know, dumping your stepsister. These are still $50 to $100. A card okay so let's assume this is in the middle let's call it 60 70 dollars we are already okay let's say that's a i don't know let's call it 70 bucks in the middle let's call the regular shockland 20 25 dollars we're at 90 dollars plus what a five dollar we're around 95 to 100 dollars in value already in the first few packs of the first box in the member on tcg player this is a class product that's why, you know, when we're revisiting some of these older sets, <laughs> the Xeno Squirrel, sorry, the old Starlight Spectacular, the, again, the Galaxy Shocks or the Galaxy Foils are where the, uh, there's another uh, Galaxy Mythic, and here we are in the back, the regular full art land, gorgeous, gorgeous lands in our galaxy. So, I'm not quite sure if the market's just slowly digesting the oversupply and the boom and bust of this product at the beginning, or if people just lost all caring of a lot of things because, again, we have a product that, well, is not terrible. And, God, those things are cool. And this, so every, I didn't realize every pack, I thought you had a chance for a Galaxy Land. So every pack of collectors has a Galaxy Full Art Land. And you have a chance for a Galaxy um, Shockland. So the consensus was that as we moved into 2024, and here it comes, and Forest and Mountain. As we moved into 2024, well, Ravnica remastered the collector boxes and the returning of Shocklands was going to destroy and put Shocklands to a dollar. And it was going to put these cards into pretty much nothing. Beautiful Steward of Myth right there in the uh, Galaxy. And that was the consensus, okay? Well, the problem was... If that came true, and Shocklands went to a dollar, and let's say, I don't know, these foil Shocklands were a couple dollars, and Galaxy foil shocks were five, ten bucks, essentially, 
the bear market case was that Infinity, especially the collector boxes, are going to pretty much be like $10, $20, $30 collector boxes. Even at $100 in the crash, these were overpriced. That was where everybody's, well, that's, I love the tokens in this, the teddy bear inside looks like the vending machine kind of thing. Isn't that hilarious? Employee of the month, just such a meme. So that's what the bear case on why stores unloaded and panic sold and didn't believe the future of this particular product line and release. Hey, we got a Stellar Pup finally in Galaxy. That's a nice little hit. Let's see, again, and say Space Jace in Galaxy. Wow, we're getting some good hits there. And of course, followed by RNRS 5 to $7 worth of basic lands. So I would like someone to run the numbers in the comment section how bad of a deal these products are. Let's say these collector boxes are on eBay or let's say TCG Player right now. And let's say these, these boxes are, well, let's say what, 150? Well, 160 with tax and shipping. So let's say 145 plus tax, 160 shipped to your door. Is $160 a box really a ripoff? We got the old phone of friend. <laughs> is that Urza's head? It looks like it. We got the prize wall in Galaxy. Hey, there it is. Um, I believe saw in half. This was, I, this was a $20 to $30 Galaxy foil card. That was a $20, $30 card. I don't know if it still is. I'm going to put that up there. I don't recall or not. So, anyways, we got our gorgeous island and our galaxy mountain there. I've been saying for a long time, and I've been responding to patron messages, and I've been, when people ask me, Rudy, what happened to Infinity? Is it completely dead? What happened to the last magic unset ever? Is it worth it? Oh, there we go. Oh, breeding pool. Oh, wait, it's just a regular one. I thought we had a, so we got our, this time we have a regular, and, and again, laugh all you want. These Shocklands, even after the reprint from Ravnica, they just reprinted Shocklands. And these are $20 to $25 a piece. The Galaxy Foils in Shocks are $50 to $100. Like, I was under the impression everybody said that was it. <laughs> Black Hole. Hey, look, it's my ex. And it's one of these things where people claimed all these certain events were going to happen. Everything was going to collapse. And it didn't happen. And newsflash to you all, box two, everybody. Um, newsflash, everyone, if you haven't been paying attention, the market bottomed six months ago. Or is it seven months now? And the market in Magic, in Modern, and Sealed Box, everything, has been doing nothing but recovering. Unless you've been living under a rock, you would be able to look at any chart on TCG Player. Ooh, nice watery grave. Gorgeous. Still beautiful cards. So that is our third. Now, I don't recall if you were guaranteed... A galaxy shock in every every box. I was under the impression you got one per box, but I genuinely don't recall if that was true. Okay. <laughs> Earl of Squirrel. Oh yes, the skull of squirrel. <laughs> Just that's sorry, that shit cracks me up. And a mountain and a nice forest there. So, by the way, everyone, uh, Philip, your first box opening there of Infinity was fantastic. That was a great box one, everybody. That was a fantastic story. Hey, we got the old pup. Very nice. And we got the two lands. So, you know, I, I'm i going to say it over and over. It, it goes to show you that it's very, very difficult to understand what the value and what the cards and what's going to happen in the future. Okay? It's very difficult. I love how many words. Form of the approach of the second son. You know, because remember the card? Anybody? Okay, never mind. By the way, hold on, hold on. Everything in a jig. I love it. It's so much fun. Forest in Island. And these this is a great moment to have the conversation with you. When we crack these packs, I like to use these videos so that we can watch cool things for y'all watching. And for those of y'all just doing kind of a listening, driving at work, podcast, or whatever, these are the moments we want to talk to you all about. Oh, that was a really nice mythic. The do-it-yourself. So that was really beautiful. These are the moments. Oh, God, God of the Shrine. There it is, folks. That is our fourth... Uh, that is regular. That's not Galaxy. It's our fourth regular Shockland. Not in the Galaxy form, by the way. Um, but th these are the times we need to discuss this. I'm like, again, what happened? What did we get wrong? Why did these things not... Why did they stop drawing, dropping? Ooh, opening ceremony. Really nice. And why are they coming back now? I love that. Masterful Ninja. Love the artwork on that. You know, what changed? Huh? That That's the conversation that... You know, people should be having with other friends in the hobby, and LGSs need to be stepping back and saying, hang on a second. You know, obviously everything's overprinted, too many boxes, Wizards, Hasbro destroyed it, everything's worthless, blah, blah, blah. By the way, Mr. X, I always think uh, Resident Evil. 
And, um, you know, it's just, I, I don't understand. You know, why and how did we go from six months ago in Black Friday, Cyber Monday of 2023, when everybody expected all these big Amazon dumps publicly to happen, they didn't happen. Old fogey! Love it. Love that card, Grand Marshal. You know, how did we get from the end is near to, nope, bear market ends, thanks for playing, everybody stand up, clap, round of applause, and now we are back to the game of moving forward with Magic and prices upticking for six months straight now. And I think it was just, we hit capitulation. That's my opinion. I think we literally went two years of people dumping everything. And eventually, similar to Wall Street, the dumps just, the sellers run out of ammunition. The sellers eventually stall out. The sellers run out of crap to dump at a loss. And I think that's really the whole story. I think that's what happened. It is as simple as that. We went from a situation, I love that Urza's fun house. You know, I love Nearby Planet, very cool. You know, I, I think the story becomes, see, how do I say this? These markets work and prices go down. Like I, do we need, I think we should have a conversation on why and how prices go down. Okay, well, let's start there. If you go on, t Space Chase, if you go on TCG Play, hey, we got the old Bobbles, the Beebles. One of my favorite, one of the best pieces of, it almost looks 3D. Take a moment, if you're not watching this video, look how amazing that artwork looks. I mean, you can hate Hasbro all you want, but that is some flipping beautiful art by Jeff. Holy smokes, Jeff, that's incredible. Anyways, but we need, to, we need to state the obvious. And the obvious is, you know, there's a point in time when people run out of things to dump and sell and raise cash and get off the books. And, oh, oh, another saw in half. There we go. Non galaxy foil that time. And there's a moment where, ooh, Sword of Dungeons and Dragons. Really? That, that used to be a pretty big hit. And Forest and Mountain. Okay. That was the end of box two. Uh, by the way, we did not... Have a Galaxy Shockland in that box, Philip. So, I just realized, so if you do not get a Galaxy Shock, and considering that one card is $50 to $100 a box, okay, essentially, if you don't hit a Galaxy Foil Shockland, um, yeah, you can't even get close to $100 plus booster boxes in these. There's no way. You just, you can't get there. Stomping ground. So, we are at five. So, hold on a second. So... Okay, yeah, so I guess we're getting an average of two. You get two regulars per box. Is that is that how it works, I think? So, yeah, you really... I think that may be the weakest downfall there. So, nice uh, plate spinning there. Beautiful card. And Earl of Squirrel, of course. And we got Swampy and Swampy. Anyway, so I think we'll all... I think the story is just so simple. And I don't think people give enough credit of just being patient. But it's such a mind game. It's like the stock market. It's like Bitcoin. It's like real estate. It's like flipping things. The whole concept of holding inventory and the whole concept of, you know, logging in every day and checking the price of the stock market and the S&P and Bitcoin and you know, following all this stuff can be very stressful because the prices can swing. They can turn, you know, not in your favor and things can shift very quickly, which gives you a very scared or, oh, no, we're going down. I need to get out as quick as possible. I think a lot of that kind of added, ooh, Baron Vaughn counts. Very cool. I think that's the kind of stuff that causes a lot of the damage. I, I really do. I, I, I don't want to say it's that simple, but that's where, that's where the, emo, that's where the duress comes in. And of course, I hate that we can step back even further there. Still no shock lands. We can step back even further, ladies and gentlemen. And the reason that duress and that pressure comes and that anxiety hits is because, well, I mean, I hate to say it again, but, you know, most of these people who have LGSs are, well, they're severely undercapitalized. And it limits their potential for collection buying and things to walk in the front door. It limits their ability to buy inventory and clear. It limits the ability and removes the opportunity of doing big deals and big opportunity. Oh, standard procedure. And it, it just, oh, the old magic strings. This is a little double. Oh, triple mythic pack. Grand call. Wow, really? Four? Wow, Mara the Magnificent? That was four mythics in that pack. I know, I know. It's an, it's an unset, so it's not like the mythics are, are worth a you know, ton. But anyway, I think that's all, that's all it is. 
I really do. I think it comes down to literally just stores become undercapitalized, so they get very price sensitive and they get very nervous if something doesn't sell or the prices turn against them. And that happens all the time. I deal with it all the time. Grand Marshall. And then the stores start unloading. Then you start having the quote unquote internet, oops, you start having the quote unquote internet dump. And the internet dump is pretty much when we see a fast move. Let's look at murders of Carlo Manor. And we see a quick downtick in box bar. Ooh, some in the pack. I haven't seen that one. And, oh, magnificent. Double mythic there. And that's when you start having that accelerated temp. See, I, so many people haven't been in this industry a long time. They don't realize those sell-offs and those bear markets and those crashes, they're very, they're temporary. They don't stay that way. Do it yourself. Love it. And once that happens, you know, your instinct is to sell and run. And that's when, you know, you realize the human mind, you know, makes us do the worst decisions at the worst time possible. You know, fear in, you know, of losses makes the human brain, you know, it, it, you go into that fight or flight. You either fight it, you hold down, you bunker down, you sit on the inventory, you become a Rudy thing. Or, well, you just, you dump it. You just, you, you just go right to, you run out the room and you sell everything in, in a fire cell. And when we see that, well, that's, historically speaking... The data shows that that's always the wrong decision. That's the bad part about it. Historically speaking, selling on emotion or downturn panics is always the wrong decision. Space Jace, very nice. Oh, uh, icing manipulator. Anybody? Dessert icing, beautiful lady here. Love it. Icing manipulator. Hey, saw in half galaxy foil. $20, $30 hit right there. Very cool. And a swamp and a swamp. All right, so be very blunt. That was not a good box, Philip. We got a nice saw and half hit here. Uh, one shock land in the whole box? That was not cool. That was not cool. Box four out of six already. That was that was not cool, man. That was not a really that was that was kind of a yikes. That was kind of a yikes, man. So that was ugh, that was the worst opening we've had so far in this video. There's our beautiful temple garden there for our first shock land of the box. And here we go. We are past the halfway point, and we are hoping we're not just going to get a single galaxy in the whole thing, are we? We can't have one galaxy pool in the whole box. There's no way. Swamp and a forest. I mean, I guess if you count a galaxy basic land of five dollars in every pack, is that is that still? I guess that alone isn't that like fifty bucks a box? I mean, that does kind of. I mean, if every pack has a five dollar card in the back. I mean that that kind of I don't I guess that really distorts the value though, doesn't it? Because doesn't that really that's like a third of the value of the booster box in basic lands. That's kind of a that's a very awkward thing. So in uh yeah, we've opened this is box four. We've opened three boxes and only had one galaxy shock land. Nope, oh, black hole, there's my X. And that's really it's not a good volume. I thought we'd get a lot more than that. Marvel's Forest and Island. Dang. Yeah, I, I thought we would, but I'm my attitude is starting to change very quickly considering we got two that's 24 packs left in the next two boxes. We've got 30 packs left to open, everybody. This video is already over. Water Market and Mountain and Island. Uh, I don't have any more. We only do it an infinity box with maybe once or twice a year. We'll revisit this in a couple months, maybe. But this is, yeah. See, that's the problem. You, you know, the first box we opened was so good. The rest of these, were, <laughs> Avatar of Me, great card. And Forest and Island. We are not doing good. Like, box one was phenomenal. Like, we actually turned a profit on box one. And then it went downhill really quick. I was so confident. I kept saying in the beginning of this video, oh, Grand Marshal, I kept saying how good the value and the pools and everything. And now I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. We, all of these boxes are not the same. So we may, box one may have just been a fluke. And these other ones in the pool rates might be reality. We're getting a lot. I, you get more galaxy foils than I expected. I did not expect this. I thought it was one galaxy foil per pack. But you get a galaxy foil in the back of each pack for basic land. But then in the middle, I mean, we get, I mean, what are we looking at? One, two, three. So four, no, three. So there's three galaxy, there's four galaxy foils a pack. Is that, hold on, does that hold true? Let's open this pack. Hold on. So, let's see what we got here. 
One, two. Uh, <laughs> Mario kill. Three. Oh, Magro the magic strings. Okay, so yeah, still we get three in the middle, and you get the land in the back. So yeah, that's uh, that's holding steady at four galaxies a pack. But with that, oh, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> Stewart and Mythid. Uh, so Rob exit to the gift shop. Love that one. But we're not really, we're not getting it came from Planet Gug. Yeah. Oh, last pack. Dang, are we really? Three boxes in a row with zero get. No wonder the Galaxy Shock lands are fifty to one hundred dollars a piece. You can't flip and pull them. Holy smokes, dude! <laughs> Blast from the past. Great card. Chief Engineer. Wow. No Galaxy Shock land again. That's three boxes in a row in this case. Oh my god, really? Are you serious? Alright, box five, everybody. Oh my goodness. What a like what a flipping letdown. Dang, you tr we got trolled, dude. Phil, we got trolled. The very first box of this video. Like right oh my god, right to a shock land. There's our watery grave. Our one in the video. We had the first box is amazing, and then we just got trolled. Are we is this really happening? Okay, here we go. All right, Colossus. All right, line. Very nice line cutter. Don't try this, Ambassador Hydro, and Mountain. There we go. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful, overgrown tomb. Space Jace up there flying this thing. Overgrown tomb. Galaxy Shockland, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Holy smokes! That's only two. This is the fifth box already. Oh my god. Alright, come on, mobster. Enter the dungeon. Magger, magic strings. Island. Holy crap. Alright, everyone. Well, we're, we're getting to the end of the video. Not how I thought things were going to go. Anyways, but I want to finish this conversation. Uh, now that we're getting towards the end, and, well, nobody's probably watching. Anyways, to what do I think is going to happen moving forward? I do believe within the next five years... I do believe Magic, Hasbro, and Mark Bottomwater trying to figure out Magic 30 never being reprinted again, blah, blah, blah. I do believe they want to do, and they will release another unset. I, we've heard nothing about it, and Unfinity didn't really do that good. It kind of came out and flopped, but again, the timing was after the bull market ended and we were going down, and it had a market forces going against it, so we got to keep that in mind, too. I do believe they will do another unset in the future. But that's where it's really going to be a big problem. What I think will happen... Ooh, ooh, greatest show in the multiverse. Nice little mythic there. Nice little saga. Black Hole with the X. They're going to have to... They're going to have to have these specialty cards. Not only with serialization, but they're going to have to have a different way of kind of having value to justify expensive collector boxes and expensive items. They're not going to be able to do what they did anymore because back in the day, well, as you all know... Unsets were supported by the basic lands, period. Unsets in the past were all sold based on the excitement of having specialty, borderless, full art things. Tug of War. And, well, they destroyed that in this modern era. It came from Planet Gurg. These are one of the side effects of bad management. Because this product line, every so many years, Wizards made an unset. And they sold that with a fun gimmicky set... But you would have expensive basic lands, oh, upside down card, and that's what the market, and that's what the public, and that's what people bought into. Well, they destroyed that, mostly with secret layers in the variant flashy era of post-2020, they destroyed that. And, well, we haven't seen another, I, I, don't, I just don't know how they're going to do it. I don't, I don't see a path forward for them. I don't, ugh, really? Alright, we're getting to the end. I don't know how they're going to be able... To recover and ever sell another flashy product like this again. You can't make an unset based on the previous unset formula that Mark Rosewater in Wizards of the Coast used for pretty much what? Unglued, unstable, unhinged? Like this is the fourth unset, I believe. Well, I guess if you count unsanctioned, but that was a that wasn't a full booster box set. You know, you guys know what I mean. So came from Lana Gurg, Island, and that's it. Holy smokes. Box six, hey, at least in box five. At least we actually got a Galaxy Shock. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like two per case. I, I'm hoping we get lucky and pull to the third, but this is this is the last 12 packs, everybody. In five minutes, this video's over, and I, I know, here we go, ready? There we go, stomping ground. 
And what's crazy about that, we didn't even get any extra shock lamps in the packs like we did at the beginning of the video. So I think they're going to have to come up with some other creative direction. I don't see them never making another unset again. I, it's just part of magic history. I don't see that happening. The opportunity and the playfulness of once every five years kind of thing having an unset, but I, I don't... They, I don't know how they're going to be able to derive value. I, I just don't see a path forward, you know, with because that is, like we talk about, you can get away with Secret Lair <clears throat> for years. You can get away with reprinting to the ground, destroying every modern single card's value. You can get away with this stuff. But as time goes on, you end up paying the price. God, really? Where's our shot with this? And as time goes on, well, not only do you pay the price... But you start to really run into problems. And that's what we've seen with Wizards on their reprints. They were so aggressive on their reprints. Oh, oh, standard procedure. They've not been able to, well, it, they're having a hard time making flashy products and having value. I mean, we've got Modern Horizons 3 with the allied fetch lands. And, and, and that's it. There's nothing else coming. Like, that's every single... Uh, so at that point, think about it. At this point, in a few months, Modern Horizons 3 comes out. And that's it. Allied and Enemy, all fetch lands have been reprinted. All shock lands have been reprinted. Everything's been reprinted in the last 18 months. Or 24 months? Oh, finally! Oh my god! I think Steam Vents is the most expensive. Space shock land. Holy smoke, I think this is like the $80, $90 one. Oh my god, end of the video... A third galaxy foil, couple packs left. Holy crap, Phil, we actually had a third one. So I guess maybe every other box? So every other box to get a, a galaxy shock? Holy sm I didn't I didn't think we were getting any more. I'll be completely honest. I thought that was it. Wow. We actually oh my god, I can't believe we pulled that off. So I guess maybe on a larger scale, it is every other. Uh possibly Hey, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. A fun throwback of Richard Garfield, the PhD. Holy smokes. Does any how anybody old out there remember this? Wow. You, oh my god. That is a blast from the past, everybody. Unbelievable. Alright, well, we're gonna wrap the video up now. I appreciate you all for watching. Oh, there's a nice little far out. Um, again, thanks, Phil, for being a very kind patron. Enjoy all the cards heading your way. Um like I said, I don't expect much of anything from Infinity anytime soon. Um, the supply will continue to just kind of dwindle. I expect the box prices of this product to slowly drift higher in the coming 6, 12, 24 months. But that's mostly just because as supply disappears. The product gets older, they get dumped, everything's gone. And I think that's just going to cause some natural attrition, which as the cheapest items continue to disappear on the open market... We'll see a small uptick. I think these boxes and collector boxes will push up to the 200 range. Space Chase, I think they will push to the 200. Oh, Sacred Foundry. We got one. Egg. Wow. Wow. Box six got some fire. The very last pack of the video, everybody. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And that is all we got today. <sighs> Not what I expected. Sword of Dungeons and Dragons right there. And ending on a swamp and a swamp. Thanks for watching, folks. I got nothing. Have a beautiful night.